Greetings, First English family and friends. Welcome to Wednesday. It's actually a pretty nice day out here. Uh, 44 degrees, a little chilly, but the sun is shining as you can see. I, I've moved about three different times trying to get a good angle uh, so I'm not squinting at the sun, but uh, also not too dark for you it's in the shade. So I think this will have to do for this one. Um, so welcome to Wednesday, check-in time. How are you all doing? I pray that you are safe and healthy and well. I'll leave a comment or a question below if you have one. I do have my coffee here in a peace mug. And uh, I think it's appropriate for today after we've come through a long uh, divisive uh, election season and uh, election yesterday and, and uh, results still aren't fully in yet. So um, whatever else I wish for you today, I also wish you peace. Peace in your hearts, uh, peace in your souls, the peace of God surround you and hold you close. So, cheers, church. So I had a devotional all set to go today, um, but then I received an email. I do a, I get a daily email from Richard Rohr, who's a uh, Catholic priest, and he runs an organization called the Center for Action and Contemplation, and sent, they send out a daily email. And so I read this one this morning, and I think it, I wanted to share it with you. Uh, this is A Call to Be One. And Rich, uh, uh, Father Rohr introduces the uh, devotional this way. I return once again to the prophetic words of Sister Joan Chittister, who calls us to make an unflinching commitment to act with integrity out of the fullness of our being, not simply our pragmatic, comfortable, or fearful, fearful selves. So that's the, his introduction, and here are the words of Sister Joan Chittister. As a people, we are at a crossover moment. It is a call to all of us to be our best, our least superficial, our most serious about what it means to be a Christian as well as a citizen. Where in the midst of such polariz polarization and national dis... dis I'm going to try that again. Where in the midst of such polarization and national disunity is even the hope of one-ing, that's O-N-E, one-I-N-G, of integrating the social with what we say are our spiritual lives? Even the ghost of an answer makes serious spiritual demands on us all. To heal such division means that we are obliged to search out and identify our own personal value system. It requires us to admit to ourselves what it is that really drives our individual social decisions, our votes, our political alliances. Is it the need to look powerful? The desire for personal control? Do we have the courage to confront the debased with the ideal, even in the face of ridicule, ridicule and recrimination? Or is cowardice our secret spiritual sickness? In that case, our national health can only get worse. A national cure also surely demands that we begin to see tradition as a call to return to the best of the past, not a burden to be overcome in order to secure the best of the present. It is the sense of a commonly held tradition of the common good, once a strong part of the American past, that we clearly lack in the present. We must make Love one another as I have loved you, the words of Jesus in John 13, the foundation of national respect, the standard of our national discernment, the bedrock of both our personal relationships and a civilized society. To be one, we don't need one party, one program, one set of policies. What could be duller, more stagnant, more destructive of the soul soulfulness it takes to create and preserve the best of the human experience than such a narrow-minded view of planetary life. What we need is one heart for the world at large, a single-minded commitment to this more perfect union, and one national soul, large enough to listen to one another for the sake of the planet, for the sake of us all. So where can we look for one-ing? Again, O-N-E, one, I-N-G, one-ing, in the political arena, only within the confines of our own hearts. Politics, government, does not exist for itself. 
And if it does, that is precisely when it becomes at least death-dealing, if not entirely evil. In the end, politics is nothing more than an instrument of social good and human development. It is meant to be the right arm of those whose souls have melted into God. I just found those words so powerful, especially, as I mentioned earlier, that we've come through a divisive election season. Politics divides us. Um, our, our country is, is dealing with the effects of systemic racism. Um, and that's a dividing issue. I don't know why, but it is. Um, the pandemic is still going on. And we can't agree on science. <laughs> we can't agree on scientific facts, which is, which is strange. Um, yeah. So, so we go back. We go back to Jesus' words: "Love one another as I have loved you." And that's that's the key, right? Love one another. And and elsewhere in the in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, he talks about the two greatest commandments. Love God with everything you have and love your neighbor as yourself. And how we do that is that we follow Jesus and we follow his example of serving and helping and, and loving, especially those who are what society would call the least among us, the poor, the hungry, the, the people of different color, people of different faiths. That's who we love. That's who we, Jesus calls us to love. Um, yeah. So we're going to I'll, I'll close with my regular closing. So be of strong heart and good courage this day, dear church. Keep yourself safe and well. Again, wash your hands, wear your mask, keep physical distance, stay home as much as possible. As a body of Christ in this world, we share the light of Christ and we love our neighbors as ourselves, like Jesus wants us to. So we close with a prayer from uh, Father Richard Rohr. Let us pray. Oh, great God of love. Thank you for living and loving in us and through us. May all that we do flow from our deep connection with you and all beings. Help us become a community that vulnerably shares each other's burdens and the weight of glory. Listen to our hearts, our, listen to our hearts' longings for the healing of our world, knowing you are hearing us better than we are speaking. We offer these praise, these prayers, in the holy name of God. Amen. Blessings upon you this day. Peace. See? Peace. Oops. There we go. Peace. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.